Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hope everybody's well. Uh, we're uh, all things sky blue and we're doing our game preview with Sam uh, in a moment from Blues Focused. Um, as you can see down on the uh, ticker, uh, scrolling along, that's where you can find us. Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, uh, as well as YouTube. Uh, we are on um, Spotify, Amazon. You can find us. Uh, you can say all things Sky Blue into Alexa and you will bring us up. Uh, we are also uh, sponsored now by Right Steel Fabrications that can do all your fabrication work uh, for your steel beams. Uh, and we're also partnered with the Anecdote Sports Bar at the CBS Arena. So without further ado, uh, I will bring my fellow colleague in, Mark. Good evening, Mark. You okay? Hi, Stuart. I have yeah, I've on yet. Good, thank you. Yourself? Good, yeah. Not too bad, thank you. Not too bad. And also, I will bring in Sam from Blues Focus. Good evening, Sam. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Awesome. Yeah, not too bad, thank you. Not too bad. So, as always, uh, if you can uh, let us know, Sam, where we can find you and what go what you guys do. So, uh, over on Blues Focus, we create, obviously, all like the Birmingham content. We kind of do stuff before the game match previews, which I'll be doing with uh, Mark after this video, kind of similar to this format where we speak about the game, you know, news heading into it. And then also during the games, we have a uh, vlog that goes up. We have our guy, Tommy, that does that, who goes to the home and away games that does, you know, videos from outside the ground before the game, speaking about the game during it and afterwards as well. And we've also got our written stuff on the website as well. So we're on different platforms. So, yeah, feel free to check us out whenever you can and be thankful for that. Fantastic. Fantastic. So, like I said, just when we were off air, uh, we will link you in and anything that we do uh, leading up to the game. Uh, if you can pass it around your fellow fans, it'd be much appreciated. So, uh, a little bit about the history then uh, of ours. I haven't gone back too far. I've only done the sort of the last six games and the re I normally do the last five. But the reason I've done the last six is because uh, four of them were, I think they were draws anyway. I think the last three have been draws um, where we've won uh, two sort of out the last three, if you like, with a draw and throwing in, in between uh, two of them. So I don't necessarily think that um, in regards to uh, us against you, that it's ever been sort of a one way. I know obviously we, we did have a 4-2 win, but generally it's been quite close games between the two of us hasn't it really mm, yeah especially like in recent history as you said you know the amount of draws we've had in the last sort of few meetings i mean the last time we actually beat you guys was all the way back in 2020 so i think it may have actually been pre-covid times in that uh, strange fa cup draw that happened where you know we kind of swapped ends didn't we because you were ground sharing with us at the time that's and then right, obviously yeah. you guys were in the home end and then had to switch around all this kind of stuff so um yeah, that was a funny sort of turn of events just before COVID. But ever since we've come back from the COVID break, we haven't actually beat you guys. So, um, yeah, we're looking to actually win against you guys for the first time in a while. And it should be a good game on Friday. Well, it's funny you actually mentioned the last time. So that was obviously in the cup. The last league win that you had was actually the 13th of August, 2011. Wow. So that's that's how far it's back since you, 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 were, you sort of lost. But like I said, in between that, there has been a fair few draws uh, in there. No one's really, we haven't, you know, we haven't dominated and won the sort of, you know, the last nine or 10 games or however long, uh, however many games it is kind of thing, really. There's been a lot of draws in there with with the odd win uh, that, that we've had. Um, how do you feel about that, Mark? Do you think that it's it's always been a close game or do you think we've always dominated and we haven't got necessarily the results that that have warranted that i think the only game that um i felt wasn't close was probably the, the previous batch at the cbs last season where i think we won fairly comfortably and the blues are pretty poor but other than that yeah i definitely agree i think uh games against Birmingham's always it's quite tight games um so <clears throat> i'm hoping that uh that Birmingham's winless run since 2011 continues on on the on Friday night, but obviously see what happens. But um, yeah, I think I think generally speaking, it's, it's always a close game. It's Birmingham, and they're always a, a physical side that will um, certainly will are capable of causing problems. So I think I'm yeah, I'm looking forward to the game on Friday. Yeah, obviously um, moving on. Obviously that's the, that's the sort of the history that we've got between uh, the, between the two of us. Um, but some of the players that you've brought in. 
uh, have been quite quite astute, I think. Um, January, I think, will be a little bit more telling uh, for you guys, especially with the, with the new manager. But with, obviously, Eustace uh, got rid of a lot of players. I think uh, you got rid of 18 and you brought in 13 new players. Mm-hmm. A few of them loan signings, the like of Burke and, uh, and people like that. You've got Dembele there. You've got um, Moyoshi uh, and you've got Stansfield as well. Um, was you expecting that many in? Do you ex- did you expect Eustace to make that many changes? Uh, and are you happy with the players that he brought in? Yeah, I mean, in terms of the players that were brought in over the summer, it was just a hectic transfer window with so many sort of departures and so many players come in and as well. And I think this all comes to sort of what happened in the summer with the new takeover. So we got took over by Nighthead Capital, an American investment firm. And um, they've really sort of pumped in a lot of money to the club and made everything good on the outside. Like, there's a lot of sort of infrastructure that's been done at the club, you know, the whole f- situation with the seats and everything. It's been three and a half years since we've had a full capacity St Andrews. And this is because of the neglect of the previous owners that sort of failed to do the repairs on the ground that was necessary. So these guys have come in, looked to do that straight away and also given the management team a bit of money to work with. And as you said, there was a lot of transfers that came in for actually money as well, because we're so used to signing loan players, free agents, all sort of in the past, you know, in, towards the end of their careers or just coming up. So, you know, you're not going to get them the next season if they're on loan from a big club. And we've kind of had that big transition where we're trying to sort of adapt as a team now to the championship and sort of really make a go of it of signing younger players. Like you look at Ethan Led and Lee Buchanan, say, for instance, our uh, fullbacks, where they're both pretty young. And you'd say that if things go well, they're going to be our fullbacks for the next few years. So now we're actually looking towards the future rather than just for the short term solutions. We're trying to think more long term. But obviously, with the whole change of management, that throws a whole different spanner into the works, really, doesn't it? Yeah, de- it definitely does. Anything you want to add to the uh, to the players, Mark? Um, I mean, which players have stood out for you this season from from a Blues point of view? Have all the signs? I mean, I, I quite like um, Shriki Dembele from from mm. the games I've seen him when sort of prior to joining Burma. I thought he was a really good player. So at yeah, Peterborough going a few couple of cups. I think it was at Bournemouth as well. Which which players have stood out for you this season? Um, so I'd say the players that we've brought in that we had on loan like previous seasons. So Dion Sanderson's come in. He was on loan at Birmingham for the last couple of seasons. And now we've actually tied him down to a permanent deal. So that's a good one. Straight away being made as club captain. That's a big statement. Um, Christian Bielik's also come in on a permanent deal. He was at the club on loan last season from, from, from Derby County. And uh, we managed to get him in on a good deal, actually, because he actually cost Derby £10 million, which is a lot of money. But obviously, injuries has kind of hampered his career a little bit. But at the moment, he stayed pretty fit. So that's been a good signing. Uh, Streaking the Bella, as you said, Mark, he's been a fantastic signing. You know, lots of pace, lots of skill. Um, 27 years of age, so he's still got a lot to give in terms of his age and that. And uh, he's got a few goals already this season. And Jay Stansfield up top on loan from Fulham, he's been fantastic and someone that I think would benefit from the coaching of Wayne Rooney because I feel like both of them are sort of similar players in the fact they're strikers, like to drop deep, very aggressive sort of link-up play. So I think in terms of sort of Stansfield, he's going to benefit from the coaching of Rooney. I think that's one that we've got in the summer that is going to get better as time goes on. Yeah. Yeah, obviously you did mention the, um, you mentioned obviously Rooney there. Uh, He hasn't had the best of starts. Uh, I think, you know, I think everybody was clear to see. Um, Obviously, Eustace left when you were sitting really well up there. Uh, in I think you were seventh place, just outside the playoffs. Um, you'd just beaten uh, West Brom, local rival of, of both of ours, really, in the West Midlands. Uh, 3-1, nice and convincing win. Was you surprised that they they made the jump so quickly from uh, from Eustace to Rooney? Um, it, it was rumoured a bit actually before the news officially came out. So there was obviously whispers of it when the new ownership come in because, you know, it tends to be the fact that when new owners come in, they have their own ideas. They want to implement their own style, their own sort of way of thinking. So straight away when a new owner comes in, you think the manager's job is perhaps in a bit of danger. And that, you know, happens to be the case with Eustace departing for Wayne Rooney. And um, with Rooney, I think there was obviously the big talk about it, you know, him being such a good player and his playing days, obviously playing well doesn't translate to managing well. And I think that's something that we're perhaps seeing at the moment in the fact that we've only won one game when Rooney's been in charge. And we were right up there, as you said, when Eustace was our manager, you know, 
he got us into the top six going into the international break in October. And we thought that things were looking really good after that West Brom win. There was just a massive feel-good factor around the club. You know, that game had more or less sold out. There was a fantastic atmosphere built. You know, West Brom kind of caved in in the derby and we really just sort of went forward with it. And um, going into this national break, we're thinking, right, OK, get a couple of players back from injury and then push up further in the league. And then obviously Rooney comes in and you're thinking, are we going to be able to sustain the top six because of his managerial record? Perhaps not the best, but I think with Rooney, what the board are trying to say is, is give it a bit of time because he's trying to change the whole playing style of the team. You know, we weren't really a team that have ever played out from the back or tried to play possession football, but he's trying to do this now. And I think what some fans are thinking and maybe the owners as well, is that he needs a couple of transfer windows to bring in his own players that he wants that plays his style of football. So it may take a bit of time and a bit more suffering until we get to the point where the owners perhaps can see us finish it in the top six. But I don't think this season will come anywhere near it. Yeah, again, like I said, you know, Birmingham and Coventry are so very, uh, obviously, the, geographically, we're both very close. But in terms of the football team as well, uh, we're so very similar uh, to one another, really. Um, obviously, your, you, you know, your owners decided to go the opposite way to what Doug King, when he first came in, um, you know, 18 months ago uh, or so, and he decided to keep, you know, Robbins and and the way that we're going, even though, you know, we had a little bit of a poor start, but we could see that the player, obviously we had Hamer and we had Vic and people like that as well. But they decided to keep the, the sort of the, the nucleus um, together, where I think they've, you know, the new owners have taken... The, the, the complete opposite and just switched everything out and you're taking the hit now, but you might reap the uh, the rewards sort of maybe again in, in 18 months time. It might be too long. Do you think fans, your fans would, would last that long? Do you think, do you think that they would keep the faith or do you think they'll, they'll slowly start turning if the performances aren't there and the results aren't there? Mm, it's a good question, actually, because this is what a lot of the fan base is speaking about at the moment. I mean, when Rooney came in, it was a 50-50 split with fans saying, OK, this is the direction we want to go in now. If we want to get out of this league, this is the team, This is the way that a lot of teams that do get out of the league play. And then there was obviously the other side that was saying, Eustace didn't do anything wrong. And why is he being sacked for someone that's just a bigger name? And obviously it was a 50-50 split when he came in. Now I'd say it's about a 70-30 in terms of not agreeing with Rooney and the appointment of him sort of coming into the club because of the results that have happened and the way that we're playing, you know. Uh, last Saturday was a game against Rotherham United where a lot of fans fought home fixture against a team, 23rd in the league, haven't won away from home in over a year. Let's try and really make a statement against these guys and end up being nil-nil. We were lucky to get a point in the end. So it's one of them things where, you know, things that perhaps fans that are in favour of Rooney wanted to see happen are not happening at the moment. And it's that thing where, how long do you give it? How many transfer windows? How many games is it going to be until we start really looking over our shoulder? Because last weekend as well, you sort of looked down at the bottom of the league and, you know, you see teams like Sheffield Wednesday winning, Plymouth winning, QPR winning, and you're a bit like, oh God, are we going to get sucked into it again? Because we're all too familiar with relegation battles at Birmingham in the last few years. Yeah, and it's, you know, you, his one win did come against um, a poor run of form in Sheffield Wednesday as well, didn't it? They've kind of changed their fortunes a little bit now and they're starting to play typical coming to, um, obviously coming to us at the uh, on Boxing Day uh, that they decide to actually decide to play and get into some sort of form. But uh, hopefully we'll still have enough to, uh, to beat them on Boxing Day. Um, but it's, you know, have you got anything... Are you, you, are you clinging to anything or are you, you know, are your fans trying to sort of, I've lost track of what I was going to say, actually, then, to be <laughs> fair. Uh, do you want to come in, Mark? Do you want to know um, anything else on Eustace or Rooney? Um, I mean, with I guess you, you touched the fact that if it's a change of playing, different playing style with Rooney, sort of more passing game, I mean, do you think do you think the players have have struggled to adopt to his methods? I guess, or is that or is that is that fair to say they've struggled or or not? Would you say? I think they have struggled. You look at some of the goals that we've conceded, and the amount of goals we've conceded as well in the league. It's a lot of goals conceded for a team that you know before Rooney came in, it was only less that conceded less goals than us. And this is worrying to see because of the fact that we were so solid at the back, and it's now being 
a thing where Rooney's being told to sort of, you know, do stuff by the board, I think, you know, they have their own style of football that they want to play. And Rooney's the kind of manager that wants to play that type of football. So obviously you see the whole playing around from the back. I mean, prime example is John Ruddy in goal. John Ruddy, he's someone that has been around for a long time, 36 years of age. And obviously his whole career is being told to, you know, sort of play a certain way. And now he's being told to play with his feet, you know, do his whole distribution from the back kind of stuff. Doing that, you know, with someone so late in their career, it, it's, it makes it a bit hard to coach them properly. Whereas like with the younger players, perhaps Rooney's doing a bit better with them in terms of teaching them how to play. Like say, for instance, Jordan James, I think he's been fantastic since Rooney's come in. 19 years of age, centre midfielder, Welsh guy. And he's already represented his country a few times. And I think he's going to represent them even more because of the fact that he's playing so well and adopts into this style. But the defence is really struggling with it. I think, you know, you get players like Ruddy at the back. Sanderson, as much as I love the guy, not really comfortable with the ball at his feet. And I'm sure that's something that the Coventry management team will be looking at and going, right, when he gets the ball, we'll trigger the press on him. And I think with the full backs, they're fantastic going forward, Led and Buchanan. But they're, they leave a lot to be desired at the back because they are committing so much forward. And it's that thing where we're trying to sort of step out onto teams now rather than sit back and soak up the pressure. So it's that whole change of style that really is, you know, a bit of a barrier at the moment for us. Yeah, obviously it's not it's not normal that I would um, say this really, but what was your when Eustace was in charge? What was your expectations? And now Rune is in charge. What are your expectations? Um, I'd say my expectations for the season are probably the same. Like I would have been happy with mid table before the season started. I'd okay. certainly be happy with it now because of our form at the moment, you know, just to get a few wins on the board. But I, I knew that, you know, this new ownership coming in, it was going to be a thing where we gradually got the league. You know, it very rarely happens, doesn't it, with a league, um, with a team in the championship where they're sort of lingering around the mid-table area and then all of a sudden they shoot up and have a brilliant season. It's very rare that you see that. So I think it was always going to be a thing where we build up, you know, generating the revenue, as the CEO Gary Cook said, you know, it's all about sort of, getting the money in to then be able to spend the money. And I think we're going to have a huge window next summer. But January, it's all about, you know, just trying to perhaps get a, a couple of bigger names in, maybe on loan deals, players that perhaps have been in the Premier League that are not getting the game time, that are a bit more comfortable with the ball at their feet. So I think it's going to be about that now. And then next season will be the season where, you know, if you ask me where I think we'll finish, I was, I'd say higher than mid-table. And that's something that I hope to see in the fact that, you know, we finish mid-table this season build on it and stay in the championship as much as it sounds a bit drastic with Birmingham you can never write off a relegation battle <laughs> yeah it look it's um it is a little bit of a weird one obviously for you guys that have gone through that process of having used us all of a sudden you're having to sort of change but that's something that Rooney does bring isn't it he is a name and you know he's got a, probably a lot of contacts still at United at Derby exactly. Um, you know, and being over in the US as well, you know, is is seen is seen a lot, and is and is he's, uh, he's got a lot of contacts, hasn't he, that he could potentially bring to you guys. Mm, that's it, isn't it? Like with the Premier League stuff that I say about, you know, the January window, maybe inquiring at a club like Manchester United because with United we have actually had some links with him in the past, and the fact that um, Darren Fletcher, the United CEO, is good mates with uh, Craig Gardner, who's the Birmingham sort of technical director. And um, them two, you know, playing together at West Brom, they had a good connection. And I think they've kind of used that to bring in some players to Birmingham. So we've had Tegan Mengi that's come to us from Man United on loan, uh, Hannibal to Heath Chong. So we've had three players in the last couple of seasons. Yeah, so right, perhaps yeah. we go back in January and ask for someone from them and maybe even another sort of top six club we could ask for for players because um, Gary Cook, our CEO, used to be CEO of Manchester City. Uh, him and Tom Brady were spotted at the game last weekend. So I think it's one of them things where you know, we're going to perhaps inquire at some of these clubs for their loan talents, you know, midfielders, attackers that are a bit better, a bit more comfortable with the ball. And then maybe we might be able to get some more results on the board. I can see Johnny Evans going, if I'm honest, to you guys in January. <laughs> Johnny <laughs> Evans. Well, I mean, Rudy's good mates with him. So, I mean, it could be a thing where we get someone like that. I wouldn't put it beyond us. I mean, wages might be a bit of a barrier but it's one of the things where not with I'm Brady sure not, not with Brady there I'm sure you'll be fine yeah <laughs> I don't know how much money he's putting into it but he's um <laughs> chairman of the advisory board so make of that what you will yeah yeah uh anything you want to add Mark um just trying to think of um, anything to add um that's quite a prediction I think Stuart I say no okay um do you see what you're, what you've seen of us and what you've heard of us 
Uh, are there any threats that we pose to you guys? Do you think anything that we can maybe exploit? Obviously, you've mentioned about the wing, uh, the wing backs or the wing mm. or the full backs pushing forward. Do you that's, think that's an area that we can exploit? I think so. I think it's one of the things where it was a strength of us before, but now it's kind of turned into a weakness where I feel like if you guys are brave and commit bodies forward, if you dispossess us sort of in the final third, you can really get a counter-attack on us. And it's one of the things where we're not really used to that style of play yet. And um, I mean, in terms of sort of the players you've got, I, I remember last season, uh, we were sort of on a really good run in the top six before the World Cup and we played Sunderland, uh, St Andrews, just before the uh, World Cup break. And uh, Ellis Sims scored on that day. So he's kind of a player that has a bit of a decent record against us. And um, he's one that I'm looking out for. And obviously you've got different players in around the midfield attack areas, like you, you Hadji Wright, say, for instance, spent a lot of money on him in the summer. So I'm sure he's one to sort of look out for and the other players that you guys have spent money on as well so there's a lot of attacking talent in terms of the money spent i mean whether it's all coming to fruition or not for you guys yet that's something we'll speak about in my video um it's really interesting to see what's happening at coventry and if you guys beat us on friday you'll take uh, take us over in the league so it's going to be interesting yeah it definitely is now obviously on to us mark um Obviously, there's a lot of calls for, for Sims to actually start because he hasn't really started that much so far and maybe to get a run of games. Compared to, obviously, the Ipswich game where um, he, he played, you know, the uh, the five across midfield and just played one up front, do you think he will revert back to a 4-3-3? I hope so, yeah, because I think we struggled a bit against Ipswich, I thought Hitachi Wright wasn't the, the right selection on as, as the lone striker because I felt that um, I felt he got he lost the ball a bit too easily. But having said that, I felt we were a little bit we were a little bit too static as well generally in our play. We're too slow when we had the ball. It wasn't enough movement. So, and I said I said that before the game we should have stuck before three three, and I'd hope that that's what they'll do for this game. Uh, on on Ellis Sims, uh, it was interesting that Sam mentioned that he's got a good scoring record against Blue. Blue. So obviously that that's that's a, a good, another good reason possibly to, to throw him in to start. Um, and I would probably go Sak Sakamoto should be starting this game as well. I'm hoping for because uh, why he was left out, I do not know because he came on his hips which second half and he looked he looked really really good. So. Yeah, it's, it's it's an important game for us. You know, it, we've got you know home game uh, in front of the sky cameras. We've got to you know we've got to take the game to Birmingham and hopefully we can win. Because after this game, you look at the next you know fixtures and it's, it's, it doesn't go a lot tougher really. You've got Leeds, Southampton, and obviously your Sunderland, also just the sat there managers. So you know, I think it's a game we we, we need to win really because um, you know we need to start climb up this league. And um, hopefully we can do that on the, on Friday. Yeah, definitely. I, you know, I am in an agreement with you. I think um, I think we have got to revert back to type that we, you know, we drew against uh, Stoke and we beat Plymouth and we beat Millwall playing a four three three. I think you know round pegs, round holes need to be adapted there. And I think you know uh, Sakamoto on the right, Hadji on the left, Sims up the middle for me as well. Um, and you know the the back four, uh, well back five including Collins at the as, as the keeper, and then the the midfield three are, are the ones really that you can you can play about with a little bit more I suppose because you've got O'Hare that can play in there, Palmer's coming back as well, uh, you've got Latty that can play in there as well, and obviously you've got probably the first two names on the team sheet at the moment I would say would be Sheaf and Eccles. Uh, and then it's just who you who you decide to put in there with it, really, whether it's a defensive minded one like Latty or whether you put the energy of uh, Allen or whether you actually play a little bit more further forward thinking and have maybe O'Hare in there as well, possibly. So that that's the area where we've got more options, I think. And I don't think really, apart from everybody else, that that. That central three, nobody, I don't think, really would be that bothered who you put in there, and they would be happy with that, if I'm honest. But I think the core of the front three and the back five, I think that's pretty much everyone wants that to be set in stone, don't they? Uh, but that that three is is very much up in the air. Um, can I get a prediction out of you, Mark? Because you normally sit on the fence with these kind of questions, but can I get a prediction? 
Uh, I'll sit on the Sky Blue, um, all things Sky Blue, uh, X, X Twitter space on the Sunday. I was going to go for a 2 0 win. So I'm going to back the lads to win 2 0. So um, I'm, I'm confident we can win. I think uh, Birmingham, not in a great run of form. Um, I saw a bit of the highlights against Rotherham, and um, as, as Sam alluded to earlier, the map mistakes they were making. I think Ruddy with the goal kick, where Rotherham could easily score from a, from a, a poor goal kick, and that's kind of hopefully that's something like that will might set the tone for the game. So, you know, I mean, look, no, 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 there's no easy game in the Championship. We, we shouldn't underestimate any side, but um, you know, it's a game we've got to be targeting three points at home. So, I, I'm going to back the lads, and we're going to win two two nil. Good lad, that's what I like to hear. Sam, can I get a prediction out of you? Dare I? <laughs> um, I'm not going for a Birmingham win. I think it's one of the things where, you know, you guys would have seen the Rotherham highlights and the fact that we were making a lot of mistakes at the back and we all kind of come to the conclusion that a better team would take advantage of the mistakes that we made. And obviously Coventry, their forward line, you know, spent a lot of money on it uh, last summer. So I think them guys are going to be able to punish the mistakes that we make. But I do think we'll score as well. So I'm going to go for 2-2 draw. Okay. Okay. So there's you see goals in it, which is good for the yeah. uh, for the sky cameras. It is um, yeah. Wayne Rooney's Birmingham City, as they call us. <laughs> <laughs> so um, well, look, I, I I still think that we've got enough to to win. Um, I think, as always, especially for us at the moment, the first goal is vitally important because at the minute, if the opposition score. We're kind of struggling to get a win. I don't think we've we've come from behind yet. Um, so the first the first goal was very important. I think if we score first and it's early on, I, I you know it might be three or four. If it's you know if it's a little bit later on, um, I think we might it might be a one nil or a, or a two one or something like that. Um, but the, the first goal is going to be vitally important. I am going to go for a city win. Sorry, Sam. Um, but uh, but like I said, like Mark said as well, it's there's no easy games in the championship. And me saying that it's three or four is no disrespect to you for you to you guys. It's just the form that you're in, and I think we're we're due to if everybody hits form at the right time and you guys aren't in form, I think it could be it's it could be good for us. But um, I'm, I'm going to go for a 3 0, I think. Or, no, I'll go for a 3 1. I'll let you guys score one. Have a goal. <laughs> yeah, have a goal. Have a goal on us. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much for that. Um, so, before we finish up, I do get the guests to do word association. Okay. Uh, so, I'm just going to say uh, a few things to you and just give us a one worded answer. It doesn't have to be one word, but it would be good if you do. <laughs> okay. um, so, the first one is St. Andrews. Ooh, geez, I was going to say Fortress, but really not at the moment. Um, we've actually got a decent record at home because we're actually in the top six in terms of points picked up at St Andrews. It's the away form okay. we're really struggling with. But I say Fortress because um, we had this thing at Birmingham last week and it was called the Open House where the um, owners and the chairman spoke to 100 season ticket holders at the ground. And they gave a sort of explanation as, as to what they want from Birmingham in the next five, 10 years. And one of the things that Tom Wagner said is he wanted to make the uh, St. Andrews ground a fortress. And he came to the game against Rotherham on Saturday. And he may be regretting his words now because of the performance we put in. So, I mean, I'll say fortress because it's the uh, word on the mind of Birmingham fans at the moment. OK, fair enough. Um, I am going to come back in a minute and speak about this guy because I think it would be it would be rude not to. Who's going to be the next Jude Bellingham? Who's going to be the next year, Bellingham? Yeah. Um, good question. I'd say, actually, someone that's been in the news in terms of Birmingham recently is Ramel Donovan. Um, he's a guy that made his debut uh, last week. He was 16, year, 16 years old when he made his debut. Um, and he's just signed his first pro deal. And he's someone that a lot of Birmingham fans are speaking about. Attacking midfielder um, was sort of in and around the first team set up uh, when John Eustace was manager. He made a couple of appearances on the bench. He made an appearance on the bench against... Uh, Forest Green Rovers when he was 15 years old. So in terms of, you know, Bellingham qualities, I guess that's one of them with the fact that he made an appearance on the bench at such a young age. And um, apparently when Rooney came into the club, Romeo Donovan actually asked Rooney if he could train with the first team because he wanted to actually go and try and prove himself to someone as big as Rooney. So to do that wow. at 16 years old takes a bit of bottle and now he's got his first pro deal. So um, he's someone I'd say to keep an eye on. He'll probably be on the bench actually on Friday. So what's his name again, appearance. sorry? Romeo Donovan. Ravel Donovan. Okay, mm. excellent. Look out for that. Uh, 
I will do, definitely. <laughs> uh, these next two are a little bit more uh, similar, but I just want your take on it. So the first one is Eustace. Oh, I'd say for Eustace, I'd say hero for what he done for us. You know, the fact that when he came in, uh, we were favourites to go down. The club was in a complete mess, you know, on its knees really financially. And um, there was such a sort of negative feeling around the club because of the fact that when Eustace came in, uh, Lee Bowyer, who is a club legend, was manager before. A lot of fans thought, you know, there was last chance saloon for someone to sort of come in and make an impact. He didn't really do so. Eustace came in, first managerial job in the EFL. Not much expected, but um, we had our best league finish in seven seasons. So it's something that, you know, still plays on the mind of Birmingham fans. The, the emotions are still a bit raw. Um, but I'd say, yeah, a legend for what he done, sort of uh, doing, you know, saving us, I guess, from certain relegation because of the fact that we had nothing coming into the club, had to work off loan transfers, free transfers. So, yeah, for what he done, I'd, I'd say that's my word. OK. Rooney. Time, I'd say. One of the things where perhaps if you give him time, things may change around and he's not your fan favourite at the moment. But if he has the time to perhaps work with the players, bring in some of his own, then things could turn around and be a bit better. So I'm being optimistic at the moment. I may not be so optimistic after Friday's game, but we'll see. <laughs> OK, fair enough. Favourite away ground? favourite away ground um, I'd say for me um, I'd actually say Loftus Road because it's one of the things where um, I'm actually not from Birmingham my dad's from Birmingham whole family's from there um, but he moved to um, Hertfordshire where we live now and it's one of the things where wherever there was QPR away in the championship we'd always go to it because it's the nearest ground to us so it kind of has that emotion attached to it for me for you know going to away games with Birmingham uh, London away days, the ones that I could get to. And um, despite the fact I haven't actually seen us win at QPR, it's always a good laugh with Birmingham fans and we always create a good atmosphere there. Brilliant. Fantastic. Thank you very much. So before we finish off, obviously I did mention that we were going to mention him. Uh, I believe last night you won the Top Boy Award, um, which is Jude Bellingham. Mm. You retired his number 22 shirt, if I'm honest, at the time. I thought, what a ridiculous thing to do. Probably <laughs> like many other fans did. Yes, exactly. Um, but, oh, my God, how how good is that lad? Did you did you guys that were watching him, did you know how good he was going to be or was you just hoping or, or, or what it was? What was it like? It was one of the things where the first time I saw Jude play um, was literally just after he turned 16. And um, he was in sort of this system where we played 4-4-2 pretty regimented and he was kind of in that centre midfield role where you think right he's going to get swallowed up in the championship you know being that young in a league that physical but he just kind of took the game to a different level in the fact that he was so comfortable on the ball um physical even for his age even though he was still a young whiffer snapper then but you know lo loves to sort of have a go at some players you know rile them up um, and you perhaps see that now you know with the emotion that he shows on the pitch he's someone that you know Birmingham fans look at and go, I was there when Jude made his debut or I was there when Jude scored his first goal. So, you know, we're really lucky to have him at the club for when he did. And um, in terms of retiring his shirt, I think Birmingham fans are saying we're going to uh, reserve the shirt instead of retiring it. So maybe when he's in his late 30s, he wants one last go of us, get us back to the Premier League because we'll probably still be in the Championship then. So we're saying reserved instead of retired, but he's doing us all proud. Definitely is. Definitely is. Yeah. What a player and is, you know, it's, it's a shame that you couldn't have hold of his uh, his brother because his brother looks like he's a really really good player as well. Mm. Might not hit the heights of what uh, what Jude did, but uh, but Job's doing a brilliant um, oh, yes. a brilliant yeah. job at uh, at Sunderland as well. And he um, scored against us a couple of weeks ago as well to rub it in. <laughs> I know, yeah, I know. <laughs> no idea. Oh yeah, but uh, but no, uh, I just had to mention obviously Jude as well because um, because he is such a special player and for England, you know, he's. I, I can see him being future England captain as well, if I'm honest. I, th I think he's got yeah, that same. much bad in that he, that he could do that job. Um, so it would be wrong not to to do this pod and mention uh, Hugh Bellingham. Anything that you want to finish on, Mark? Um, no, I think um, so I'm looking forward to the game Friday. I think it'll be a, a tightish game. But I'm hoping it will win. But uh, yeah, it's been a, been a good chat tonight. How many are you expecting to bring, Sam? Do you know? 
Um, ooh, for the game, that's a good question. It's one of the things where I think it will be sort of round about the 20,000 mark because what's happening is, is the stadium's still not fully repaired. There's still sections of it you'll see from sort of Friday if you're at the game. No, I meant to, I meant to ours. Oh, oh, got you. Um, how many people are we bring in? I'm, I'm not sure. I think it's about two and a half thousand. Say again, sorry, Mark. I think it's around about two and a half thousand. Is it? Um, I think there's a bit, there's a little bit of furore. I think from what I, I think, yeah, I saw online there's about sixty tickets about. left or something. But the ticket price is yeah. what some fans are saying, and that's causing a bit of debate at the moment. Yeah. So, sorry, I, I, I was so caught up yeah. on what we're talking about St Andrews and that. So I thought you meant for the game there. <laughs> sorry, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Could, could, could could be to, who you bring? How many you bring into work for the CBS? Uh, it's 20, fine. You are, so. <laughs> oh no, yeah. Well, I was, I was going to say twenty thousand. Well, we, we only that's bring that many, value, maybe. <laughs> yeah. No, sorry, I was, I was completely lost on that question. But no, that's I, fine. I, no, I we've got like. Last time I saw on Twitter, there's about sixty tickets left. So I think we are going to have you know full capacity there for what you guys have allocated us, and uh, yeah, it should be a good atmosphere. Yeah, it'll be a great atmosphere. Great atmosphere. Uh, right, so just before we finish up, if you can just let us know who you are again, Sam, and where we can find you guys. Yeah, so um, I'm Sam. I do work for Blues Focus, and uh, we're a Birmingham sort of base fan channel, and uh, we do preview stuff before the games, uh, vlogging of the games, and then some feedback after the games as well. So we cover all things Birmingham City. I'm sure we'll have stuff up from the game on Friday. We'll have a vlog with Tommy covering the game and uh, feedback afterwards with the podcast. So uh, yeah, make sure to keep on track with that and maybe you may see some um, home limbs from uh, <laughs> from Tommy's perspective filming from the different side of the ground. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Right. Uh, thank you once again for coming on. Much appreciated. Great chat. No worries. Uh, yeah, really nice to have met you as well. Thanks, Sam. Thanks ever so much, Mark, as well, for coming on. Sure. Um, so, again, just where you can find us is uh, scrolling down at the bottom, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. Uh, we are on YouTube as well. We are sponsored by White Steel Fabrications and we are partnered uh, with the Anecdote Sports Bar at the CBS Arena. Please go and like and subscribe everything that we do. Much appreciated. Um, and yeah, play up Sky Blues and hopefully we win on Friday night. So once again, thank you, Sam. And thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you, guys.